We also spoke to the Roche chief executive earlier on, and he was basically saying that we have to be careful about the use of coronavirus tests because there's, they're pretty scarce. I mean, are, are we, you know, are we testing too much in certain countries, or are we not testing enough? How do you get that balance? I mean, in an ideal world, everybody would have all the testing capacity that they need, and the more testing, the better. But if we have shortages of things like reagents and, and apparatus that we need to process a test, you're going to have to prioritize. And uh, it, it's really not an easy decision. It's not necessarily a scientific decision. It's, it's, it's a governmental decision. What is the ideal situation, though? If you're a government, what are you thinking right now? So we don't even know if, if antibodies that they found in vaccines will work. Sh should we act as if there's no vaccine for at least two to three years? Um, that would be the most prudent course. You know, we have 120, 140 vaccines in development for really strong front runners that are eliciting good antibody response. They look good on paper, but there's absolutely no guarantee that any of them will work. So although governments are pouring money into buying doses, hedging their bets, trying, trying to make sure they have something, we, were, we don't know if they're going to work. So the safest approach is to assume that they won't work. Uh, Jennifer, good morning. Tom Keen in New York. I want to go back to your original work in cell biology with your interest in virology and something called apeptosis, which basically I believe is cell death. I'm, of course, speaking as an amateur. And I want you to bring it over to this virus and young people. They're not going to die. I believe that's the generalization. But what happens to their cell biology while they're sick and after they're sick? Uh, Tom, I'm afraid we really don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not something that we've been able to study much yet because there aren't that many cases of younger people who succumb to this virus. Uh, the viruses have an amazing array of weapons at their disposal. Also, we have a very strong immune response that can sometimes backfire and, and, and cause problems for our own body. So uh, there, there, haven't, there simply haven't been enough studies long term because the virus has only been around since January. It, yes, cell death is, is a serious issue, but I think more more problem here is is the immune response, the overreaction that our bodies are having to this infection. Okay, what is the overreaction effect again on younger people? I would state as a generalization, in America, there's a feeling, okay, the young kids get the virus, whatever that age number is, I'll let you tell us. They get the virus and they get sick, but so what? They get better. Do they? Well, there have been a few fatalities and some children get a very rare Sort of toxic, uh, sort of like a over inflammation type of, of disease that can put them in the hospital. But yes, they don't tend to get very ill. That could be, as you suggest, that their immune systems are not yet mature, but, but we really don't know. Do we know if they can still pass it on, Jennifer? There, there's also reports, and again, there's so much conflicting information, but certainly in, in the UK, the schools reopened, and there was an understanding that actually it was more difficult for kids to transmit, at least, you know, the really young kids, to transmit the disease. And the bottom line is the more sick you are, the more virus you're going to shed. So by definition, anyone who's very ill or ill has any sort of symptom whatsoever is more likely to spread virus. Given that kids are less likely to suffer from effects of the virus, it's less likely they're going to have a viral load high enough to spread. Having said that, there is evidence that asymptomatic people can spread, and very good evidence. So uh, again, I wouldn't rule this out, and there are more studies are needed. But I don't think kids are necessarily safe, and I think it's right that schools are taking social distancing measures to, to keep that under control.